I imported a box from China. China. Why did I import a box from China? China? Well, New Zealand was the first country in the world to sign a free trade deal with China. China. That means it is very easy to import from China. You see, America never gave us a free trade deal. That means it's really easy to import from China and really hard to import from America. So what's the downside to that? Well, China does have a reputation for maybe manufacturing stuff where the quality just isn't so good. And America, on the other hand, has a reputation for manufacturing the best stuff in the world. Except cars. The American cars ain't so good. So we got this box from China. What's in it? Oh, it's quite exciting, eh? It's quite heavy. Oh, that's 130 kilos in there. That's around, oh, maybe 300 pound, not too sure. I'm gonna crack this bad boy open. And we're gonna see if China can make some good quality equipment. Really did a good job at sticking this together. I feel like the box itself is fairly good. All right, we can see the top of it. This is what we're looking at here. China, you need to make your protective boxing not quite so good. Is it a nuclear reactor? No, not quite. Let me get this plastic wrap off. Look at that. Don't open the cover before bleeding steam. So initially, it looks all right. I mean, I have imported stuff from China before and sometimes I've received some really, really poorly manufactured stuff. You can see it's not, it's not perfect. Um, but it's looking all right. So if you haven't figured it out yet, this is a Mecan Medical Autoclave. And these are some uh, what look to be popular autoclaves on Alibaba, where I often want to browse. So we imported this to New Zealand for the, of, for the purposes of using it as a steriliser here on our mushroom farm. No, this capacity is big too. They're really reasonably affordable compared to the likes of an American counterpart, where the cost would just be 10 times more. So it feels really heavy, and that's obviously all stainless steel. Is it only stainless? No, it's got to be stainless, right? Um, the craftsmanship looks pretty good. It's a bit rough in some areas. Take that in there. Inner lid. Now apparently these had multiple baskets inside. So there's one. Here's the second basket. Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Now there's the second basket. And the bottom has a big uh, element on it. We'll just throw that camera down there. So you can see an element down there. And on the wall up here looks like a thermocouple sticking inside. And there's obviously some little um, brackets there of which these two baskets sit on top of. We'll just zoom into some of the quality right now. So initially you can see I'm really looking at the um, the quality of the workmanship around here. Now it doesn't look perfect in some parts, but it's fairly good. I mean it's really really thick metal. We've got a weld on the inside which goes all the way down. And that doesn't look too bad. It looks like a fairly tidy weld. The lid here is extremely thick. 
You can see if I put my finger, my thumb next to it, you see how thick the, the metal is there? It's thick and it's heavy. It's got the silicon bead around it. There looks to be a couple of small wells which hold it to this um, hinge right there. Now I think they've actually welded these two parts together and, and buffed it smooth. Can you, you can actually see some imperfections around here. There and there. I'm not sure how well that will affect the performance. It shouldn't actually affect the performance. I just, the safety of it is the only thing it could potentially affect. But I mean that's pretty thick again. On the front we've got a pressure gauge here and we've got a timer. So I can set this, tells us the temperature, the pressure and the time. We've got a tap down in the corner to uh, uh, vacate the excess or any excess water in there. And obviously our um, power is here. Now this is three phase. I mean they've done a fairly good job, right? Like, like I've seen stuff come out of China before and they just wouldn't even bother putting these little clips on the end. You know, there's the earth there. And crimped off. So you can see the three phase breaker here. And it actually looks like it's been spot welded in a few spots just around there. Got a safety valve in the back here, which is good, great to have. Good that it's hidden around the back, so if it does go off, the boiling steam's not going to be directed out the front of the unit. Um, and then just obviously the details of it here. 150 litres, working temperature 134 degrees centigrade, 6 kilowatts, 400 volts, 3 phase. So that will be connected to this um, 3 phase plug here, is going to be shifted down here. And this will be tucked in right in the spot here. So initially it's looking pretty good. Um, I can actually see through these gaps here that there's a big, uh, I'm guessing, insulative wrap around that chamber, that big thick metal chamber in there. What we are going to do is take off this panel here and just see if we can see any um, concerning things immediately standing out to us. Here we are. Just grating my knuckles. There we go. So looking inside here, it actually doesn't look too bad. This here looks to be like a big three phase relay. You can see the fan on it, heat sink behind it, and the big relay on top. Um, and there's obviously the controller for it there. And then behind up here is the, uh, is the breaker for it. Now the cable management actually looks to be fairly good, right? They've got these nice cable ties everywhere. They've snipped, they've snipped them off, right, you know? Good on you, China. We've got the heat resistant um, covering on all of the ones. The ones there all go, go all up to the elements. So initially I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it's, it's of a fairly good quality. So this tap here drains it from um, underneath. You can see that, that the air comes out to the drain and all of these ones, there's actually three elements up there, which would make sense if it's three phase, it'll be a, a phase per element, three elements. So that's our thermocouple coming out there, and that comes down and plugs in here. So that's a thermocouple. What's interesting is this, is this pipe here, which comes out the side, and it looks like it, it leads down. It's obviously just a, a piece of pipe. It's copper above it. Copper above it, and then it goes into plastic. Knotted it around here and into this device here. Now, I'm not too sure what that is initially. I'm guessing a, a potentially a pressure sensor. So that's how it's detecting the pressure, just with this little pipe here. You can see it's maybe not affixed here as best it could be. Um, it actually looks like it's folded over slightly. And if that is the pressure sensor, if that's a pressure sensor there, you know, if that does split and you rupture the pressure, it could cause it to keep overheating and it leaks all the pressure out here, leaks all the moisture out here, which could be bad. So I'll, I'll just make sure that's all good before we actually run it. Ah yes, and further on from that pressure sensor. So the pressure comes out here, goes down that way, and the copper pipe goes up here, and actually goes to this here, to the pressure gauge at the front. So I would have liked them to use another copper pipe all the way down here to that pressure sensor, um, instead of relying on this flimsy piece of PVC tube or silicon tube. If it's silicon, it won't be too bad. Silicon's very high heat resistance. And here, this this is this is a tube here. This is connected to a um, servo and a pipe at the back. So obviously there's a controller which will be in here, 
which turns that vent there on and off. And I'm guessing that is um, an overheat protection, and it might turn that on to vent it if it detects too much uh, pressure being built up. Have you guys ever seen a fan that's got such small blades on it? It's like all middle and almost no blade. So this here is more silicon tube as well, but this is actually silicon tube with like a, a, a heat resistance resistant cover on it, whereas this one doesn't. Now this one goes up to the uh, pressure relief valve, emergency pressure relief valve, which is up there. And then yeah, the other side of that goes down out to this vent down here. If we actually look down here, you can actually see the welding here. And I can't criticise that welding at all, right? Like, if I were to get some stuff manufactured in New Zealand and it came back with that welding on it, I'd be like, yeah, that's brilliant welding. So, yeah. So, what is the verdict? I'm actually really happy with it. I bought his stuff from China before, which was which cost the same, and the quality was horrific. It was so bad, you, if you were to see it before you paid for it, you absolutely wouldn't pay for it. But this, I think, is actually really good. One thing I would have liked to have seen is that one pipe in there have some sort of heat shielding around it, but thinking about it, if it does go to a pressure sensor, then there's actually going to be no flow of uh, steam down it. And because there's no steam flowing down it, it uh, will have the ability to cool itself off slightly, um, and that's potentially the reason it doesn't need heat shielding around it. But as for the rest of it, it looks great. Um, yeah, it's obviously really thick steel, and you can see a few hammer marks and a few bits and pieces, but I haven't seen any uh, cracking initially. Um, with my eye, I know cracks can be really hard to see, you often need to use inks and dyes to see them, uh, but the rest of it looks really good, it looks really strong, um, and probably one of the most important things is that I tend to get nervous, I've got, a, I've got an all-American autoclave and for some reason I just get nervous around pressure vessels which hold steam, and I think this one, I won't get too nervous around it, right? I'll be like, you know, it's clearly heavy duty. They only, they only go up to 15 psi, so if you think about it, car tyres, it's at 32 psi. Um, actually, no, I don't know, 21 psi? No, they get 121. They often get 121 or 134. I think they get about one bar. Too, too much to think about right now. But, you know, it's not a heck of a lot of pressure. Car tyres are about 34, 40 psi, truck tyres are about 100 psi. So it's not a heck of a lot of pressure, and it's a lot of metal. So, I won't lift it off the base today, simply because um, I'm not Superman. We've got some wee wheels under there. And we'll get it connected uh, this coming week.